Greetings from the land of OP. I am Rob the OP Gamer, and it is hot as balls up in here. I am telling you what, I am so fucking hot right now, it is like a fucking Jamaican barbecue up in this bitch. I don't even know why it's so hot. It's one of those awful hot days where it's muggy as shit outside, and it's like not even sunny, and it's just still hot as shit. Oh my god. Woo! Well, let's get to it. I will just sweat my balls off while I'm doing this. We are bringing another build spotlight today, and by we I mean me, because Xavier bugged out. I was like, hey, you want to do a build spotlight? And he's like, uh, I'm going to be AFK now, but he didn't actually say AFK. He just sort of AFK'd all on his lonesome without saying a damn thing. I was like, oh, fine. Normally, I don't bring people in for build spotlights, but I am today going to do a spotlight today on the big reactors. I don't know if any of you have heard about the big reactors, but the thing about them is they're awesome, and they're huge, and the reactors themselves are pretty cool, too. So, ha! <laughs> anyway, uh, take jokes for the win! Uh, this is going to be another Agrarian Skies-themed build spotlight, where I go over all the ins and outs of a build and how to get everything set up. It's going to be a pretty big spotlight in terms of size and scaling, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and pick a direction. I'm going to go with red, because, well, that's, that's I'm Iron Man, so whatever. Um, I'm in creative mode as usual, which means I'm cheating, but this is just to demonstrate a build. This isn't to actually be playing the game. I'm just showing you guys how to do something. So I'm going to fly my ass out here to this island. This is going to be the red island, because there's islands for each one of these bitches. Normally this isn't how you start this map, but hey, whatever. If you're curious about why that was all like lit up, it's because I didn't want monster spawning. Like this guy right here, who spawned already, even though... Hey, get off my platform. Yeah, that's right. Bye-bye. So I got some glowstone nooks already carved out. I'm just going to lay a few of these down really quick just for light's sake here. Doink. And doink. Hey, what this shit is going on there? I hate lag. Lag pisses me off. I also hate this platform. This is a terabad platform. I heard a zombie. I don't know where he's at, but oh, he's inside the house. Oh, cute. What's up, guys? Did I light the whole thing up? Cool. Uh, yeah, so you can get the fuck out of here. And there we go. That's nuts to you. How did you get inside? Isn't this place lit up? Yeah, this is lit up. How'd you get in here? Well, let's do this. Bye-bye. Uh, clay. Uh, brown stain clay? Cool. So, I'm going to get some... What the fuck? the shit did that happen? What the dick is going on? Get out of my house. Somebody fall through the roof or something? Shit. Anyway, so I am going to show off a build and how to do the build reactor, the big reactor. They put out a lot of RF, and I mean a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the builder's wand here. This guy, there's a creative mode version and not creative mode version. The not creative mode version is not the one I'm going to be using, but I just wanted to demonstrate it really quick for uh, for demonstration purposes only. How did I catch that? This shit is going on there. Bye bye. So, yes, well, I can clay. Now oh, fuck clay, man. Clay sucks. Uh, Builder's wand is awesome. There's two recipes for it. There's the unstable ingot and uh, surrounding a stick with diamonds, which is specific to this map only. The map creators decided they wanted a builder's wand, but they didn't want to have to make you try to get the uh, division sigil to activate that bitch. Uh, the creative one doesn't have a recipe. It's just for creative mode use only. You don't have to have the items in your inventory in order to make it. So let's get something really cool. Let's, let's look at bricks really quick here. What's an awesome looking brick? Not a bick. I'm not getting lighters up in this bitch. Oh, uh, black pearl brick? Brick construction brick. Hmm. Obsidian fancy brick. Hmm, do 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 chiseled seared bricks. Fancy obsidian brick. Obsidian brick. Colored bricks. Hmm. Large blackstone bricks. It probably doesn't really matter. I will go with large obsidian bricks. Sounds good to me. So, I'm going to just make a platform here really quick, just because, yeah, platform. And, do 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 we are going to light this fucker up. And this is going to be about, how big is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I will go 15, because why not? That'll look absolutely shit-ass terrible, but whatever, who cares. So, Builder's Wand, let's see, how long is that? 1... 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17! Hawman! Oh, okay. So, now we'll just get some glowstone nooks and we'll just jam these guys wherever the fuck we feel like. Uh, yeah, that's good. How far did that reach? Jesus, fuck. Almost all the way. That's kind of cool. So we'll get one over here, and we'll get one over here. And we'll get one over here, and we'll get one here. And we'll stick you there, and we'll stick you... Probably right there. Is that in the center? It's probably in the center. Who knows? And yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Who cares? So, now we got some lit up platform. We're not going to have monsters spawning on this fuck. Obviously, you're not going to have Creative Brit Lab. You're not going to have Obsidian Bricks off in the start of the game, but hey, I'm just making this just for demonstration purposes. Uh, now, the big, big reactors, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, I think it's just, that's the same, I think that's the name of the mod, too, yeah, that's the name of the mod. So, from the big reactors, you get several bits of this here. The way this, the way this works out is you're going to have several different pieces of things you can make. Uh, there's going to be just the, uh, turbine reactor, which is going to be reactor creative coolant boards, and the turbine creative steam generator, creative steam generator, hoo 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 hoo. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, turbine fluid port. You're not going to mess with the turbine stuff right off. This is going to be a steam generated thing. It makes steam for make usage of creating power, and it's way more powerful than the regular reactor, but it requires this cyanite ingot. Or no, wait. Yeah. Which doesn't have a recipe. Oh, it does have a recipe. Okay, how did that happen? Oh, yeah, pulverize. Yeah, it doesn't have an actual recipe. What happens is you have to make these yellow orium ingots, uh, which is fuel for the regular reactor, and those get burned, and this is the fuel for it, and as it gets burned, it gets converted into the cyanide ingots. So you have to burn these to get these in the regular reactor. So you're going to not have the turbine power right off. I haven't even messed the turbine power yet. Maybe I'll do a, a video on that later on. If anybody's interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below, and I will tell you to fuck off. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll probably look into it. Because uh, I'm still curious about how the turbine power works, too. But, for the reactor right now, we're going to start with, it's going to be the regular reactor. And you're going to need a couple of things here. You're going to need the reactor casing, reactor controller, reactor power tap, access port. You're going to need pretty much all these things here. Um, and in order to make these, you can see you're going to need carbon, you're going to need graphite bars, and you're going to need steel ingots and some of that yellorium. Now, the yellorium is pretty easy to make. You just smelt one of these yellorite dusts, which is one pulverized tin and one sulfur. So that's not too bad to do. Uh, or you can just pulverize into a uh, yellowite ore into dust and cook that. Now, the yellowite ore is a world gen, but we're in a void world. Ha! Uh, void world, duh, because it's a platform-based thing. In a regular build world, obviously, you're going to be mining. In a regular gameplay world, this is just Agrarian Skies theme, so I'm just showing this off in Agrarian Skies. But as, any, as long as you've got the big reactors mod installed in any mod pack, you can play with this no matter where you are. It doesn't have to be Agrarian Skies map. It can be pretty much anywhere you fucking feel like. Whip your dick out, tug one out, that's how it works. So, it doesn't have to be in your bedroom. So, basically, <laughs> God. the way this works out is that if you have the world gen, you can just fuel it with world gen, which is awesome. Um, also, if you set up a laser in the Agrarian Skies, the um, Mine Factory Reloaded Laser will pull these up as well. Just not very quick because it pulls up all the things. Uh, unless you make a ton of lasers, but that requires a ton of power. And this is power generation, so heh, we'll get there eventually anyway. Um, so you'll get some of those anyways, regardless. But if you need to just make them, that's how to make them. Pulverize some tin and uh, combine it with sulfur, and you'll get that. And you can smelt that into the bar. So that's how to make that guy. And then the graphite... Oops. The graphite bar is going to be you smelt graphite dust, or you just smelt coal. That's it, just smelt coal. Just jam some coal in there. Uh, charcoal works too, so if you've got a tree farm but no real coal generation, uh, that's just it. That's just graphite bar. Not a big deal. Um, actually, I got a curious now. I've never actually looked at this dust. Oh, you just pulverized it. Yeah, okay. I don't know why you pulverize it and then unpulverize it. That's kind of dumb. Uh, steel ingots. Uh, you can only get steel by casting it in a... It's molten steel to cast, and it's not in a regular smeltery. It's going to be through a... Uh, Tinker's Mech Works. Mech. Whoop. Shit. Typing fucking fail right there. Yeah, I can't... God damn it. Book. Tinker. Yeah, there it is. Steel working in you by this Tinker Society. Tinker Steelworks, excuse me. And you get this guy by melting down... You put a... You take a... You take your book, your materials in your book. Actually, I'll just show that off really quick. 
Uh, so you get a liquid casting table, and you get a book or the materials in your book. So it's either one, I guess. And you pour some seared stone onto it. And seared stone is gotten by just smelting smelting cobblestone, basically. You just smelt down one cobblestone or any other stone piece of anything. So there you go. Any kind of cobblestone. There you go. See that? There's a shard. There's a tool rod. Whatever the fuck you got. Grout. Regular. Just one cobblestone will do enough here. And you need, just, need, just need eight millibuckets is all you need to get this guy. And if you open this guy up, it starts talking about how to do it. And it's 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 a different kind of... It's basically just... It's similar to the smeltery, but it's a little bit different. So you just breathe through this. It's, that's how big it is ever, by the way. And you just smelt it into a casting basin. And there's a way to do it, and it talks about it. So you can... I'm not going to get into that too much right now, because it's the questing book, when you're going through the questing log, when you first start Agrarian Skies, which I can't open... Oh, God. Shut up. Um, oh, Steel Power... Steel powered flight? Holy shit. Well, it's locked apparently. I can't even open it because I haven't even done any quests in this. But it's in there. Once you go through the Learning the Sky block, you get all the way through this, or most of the way through that, it will open up the uh, steel powered abilities and you'll it'll te it'll walk you through it. It'll teach you. So I'm not going to get into it. It's not that big a deal, really. I don't know why I destroyed that book. Oh, wait, no. I got the book. Anyway, so once you got steel, of course, steel's way different to get in the regular gameplay world. So if you're playing this, if you're trying to build this reactor in a regular world, ignore all that. It's not a big deal. So we are going to need some reactor shit. Uh, reactor control rod. We're going to definitely need those. Reactor glass. Reactor casing. Uh, reactor controller, yes. Reactor power tap, yes. Access port. Uh, red net port is optional. Computer port is optional. Reactor coolant port is optional. And the redstone port is optional as well. I'm going to grab some of those, though. Let's grab this, and let's grab um, reactor red net port. Uh, what did I get? Redstone port. That's good. Uh, reactor. I'm gonna grab the computer port too. I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of this really quick here, so it's not it's not that big a deal. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take and make yourself a floor of this shit. So let's go. I'm just gonna do it right here. And it can be any size, really. So let's just demonstrate this really quick here. Um, I'm going to go through here. We're going to put... Um, now, this is a multi-block structure. And I'm going to do a, just a quick little demonstration here. Uh, multi-block structure. This can be any size. It starts out the smallest one possible is a 3x3x3, three by three by three, I think? Or 3x3x4. Three by three by Does it tell us? No, it doesn't. Go figure. Uh, I don't remember if it's 3x3x3 three by three by three or 3x3x4. Three by three by it's one of those. That's a control rod, control rod, glass, glass. You need a uh, port. This has to be... Oh, so it's a 3x3x4. Three by three by so, yeah, that's totally incorrect. So, what what happens here is you need to put uh, the glass, which, by the way, is just one of those casings and two hardened glass. And then the controller, I'll just I'll just cover this really briefly, you guys. Reactor casing, reactor casing, two Eulorium ingot and a diamond. Uh, what else? Fuel rod, one of the Eulorium, three car three graphite bars, more of those casings, Eulorium. It's really not that big a deal. There you go. Four redstone, four casing, uh, chest, piston, four of those guys. Reactor computer ports. Doesn't have a recipe for some reason. That's odd. Uh, reactor redstone ports. Uh, gold in the middle, redstone, all that kind of good stuff. Rednet port, rednet cabling in a gold in the middle. And okay, that's that's all done. Cool. So let's do this. I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's a four by four by four. So I'm gonna put a. We're gonna grab a power tap. We'll stick one there, and we're going to stick this guy there, and then we are going to stick some glass. No, wait. I think it can be three by three. Let's see if this completes. No. No, it didn't. Okay. Uh, let's try the 3x3x4 three by three by then. Unless it needed one of these. Uh, no, oh, uh, yeah, it did. Okay, sorry. That's my bad. It needs an access port. Uh, derp a derp a derp. Now let's see if it completes. I think it needs another fuel rod on the top, though, so let's do that. Yes? No. Uh, so we got the control port. Yeah, we got the reactor access port. Those are optional. I think those are optional. 
Let's put one down anyway. Yes? No. Okay, let's try 3x3x4 three by three by really quick. The reason I'm a little bit stumbling over this, guys, is not because I don't know what I'm doing. It's because I haven't made one this small before, so I'm just not sure. That's what she said. Ah! Oops. Shit. See, this is why I need to Xavier here, because he knows how to do this a little bit better than I do. Uh, let's do a wand really quick here. No? Shit. Alright, you guys, I'm going to fill this hole, and I'm also going to go and look up exactly how small this can be. That's what I'm stumbling over, is I don't remember how small it can be. Because when I make things, I make them as big as possible. I like the bigger the better. So give me a second, I'm going to look that up, I'll be back. Alright, guys, I'm a moron. I forgot the fuel rod. Holy shit. Uh, so right in the center, uh, you can, it can be as small as 3x3. Three three. That was absolutely correct. Uh, but I forgot the fuel rod, so derp, the verp, the verp, the derp. Uh, the reactor control rod goes on top of all fuel rods. So in a 3x3x3 three 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 structure, the very center is the fuel rod, which is also a pretty easy recipe, as you can see, steel and carbonite, blah, blah, blah. And then you put one of those guys in there, and then the control rod goes on top of that. And then you can see a little graphic of it inside, and then you can cover this up, and then bam, reactor. And this is as small as it can possibly get. <laughs> and then you can look in here through this glass and be like, oh, hey, look, check this out. And basically what happens now is here's the power tap, and then I've got the redstone controller. The red, redstone port basically lets you do different things. You can tell this port right here to do different things. You can say, hey, uh, input reactor, set from signal or toggle on pulse. Anytime he gets a pulse, like if you have a button somewhere, you can string a cable up to this and then smack a button. And then once the uh, button pulses this, you can tell it to turn on with the button. So you don't have to actually activate it. You can tell it to do all kinds of different things. There's the control rod insertion, which allows it to insert fuel, eject waste when it gets a pulse, uh, output fuel temp. There's all kinds of different things you can do. I don't I haven't played with all these, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, but they seem pretty fucking self-explanatory to me. Read the fucking thing right there. Output fuel mix tells you what your fuel mix is at, output fuel amount. I'm pretty sure that these are for like a display screen. Uh, again, haven't tested that. This doesn't have an interface. If I right-click it, no big deal. Uh, this is your controller. This is the big main part here. This is where we're going to be doing things, and I absolutely forgot a piece of this. I didn't put in a damn. So fuck the graphic. We need one of these. Uh, this is where we're going to insert fuel. If you right-click this guy, he will insert or eject, either one. If you click this button, see it's inlet mode and outlet mode, sets the access port to outloads, outport. God damn it. Sets the access port to outlet or to inlet. It says right there, will will accept items from pipes and ducts, will not eject. So if I click this button, it changes to blue. And you can see how the little green cursor is shifted over to it. So this is an import or an, out, or an ejector port. Basically, it's the same block. And if you want to have two of them, you have to find another space. The reason I'm putting these on, the, on their own individual sides is because they cannot go on an edge. Let's grab another power tap here, for example. If I place that there, look, the, the structure didn't complete. The multi-block did not complete itself because it's on an edge. So they cannot be on an edge. They have to be in the center somewhere. And in the center with 3x3x3 three 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 is only one spot. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put some fuel in here. And actually, maybe I... No, I can't. You're going to have to take my word for it. There's fuel in there. And uh, I think it's only going to accept one at the moment because there's only one... No, wait. Each fuel rod can hold four fuel. So now that I put one in there, you can see that it's a 25% full. And if you could see it, which you can't right now... Actually, you know what? You know what? Nuts to this... That's that, because we don't need that there anyway. Uh, we're not going to be using redneck control right now anyway, so I'm going to use a glass back here so we can so we can see it. So you can see that there's it's kind of thick. <laughs> it's it's got a little bit of uh, how do you say this without making sex jokes? Oh my god, uh, it's got. <laughs> I was going to say it's got a little one inside it. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we can put up to four in there because there's one fuel rod. Each fuel rod can hold up to four pieces. So if I put another one in there, we can go in here and we can say it's gotten a little bit thicker. <laughs> it grew. <laughs> I'm such a juvenile. Let's go ahead and fill it up. <laughs> God. And the controller on the other side will reflect this. Now it's 100% full. You can see it was 25% a second ago. Let's get a cell here really quick. This is just a redstone cell from Thermal Expansion. Um, and by redstone, I mean... Uh, resonant cell. And I'm going to just stick this guy right there. And he is going... I'm actually going to stick him like this. There we go. 
That way we can see how full he is just a glance. And we come over here, and basically this thing's done in terms of building this thing. We can activate this by clicking this button right here. Doink. And you can see all the gauges fill up, and it gives you all numbers. Numbers happen! Oh my god, so pretty! And we can see that we're starting to get power. Uh, 45,000, 50,000, 60,000 RF. And if we come in here, we can see several things. Number one, uh, how much fuel is there. It's 0.2% it's depleted, 0.3% depleted. Hover over each one of these, it'll give you a little bit of information. Casing heat, 697 degrees Celsius. That is hot as shit. That's even hotter as balls than it is in my apartment right now. Core heat, 875Cs. That went up a second ago from 865C. Oh, 696, it went up too, right there. Uh, energy buffer has nothing in it because it's outputting energy to the cell. Uh, once this cell fills up, if it fills up, then it will have an internal storage buffer and it will be completely full. And once that fills up, it will be destroy it will be basically burning its fuel forever and not making you energy. So be aware of that. There are ways to control it. I'll get into that in a few minutes here. So that's your core heat. You can see it's still rising and the casing is rising. Now this information is a little bit important as well. So this is 871 reactor control. This is the overall heat of the core of the core temperature. Right now, nothing happens if this gets hot as hell. Nothing will happen. This can get all the way to full, as hot as possible, and nothing will happen. But be aware, giant awareness no note, you know, red, red flags, whatever you want to call it. Danger, Will Robinson, danger, is that in a future update, it is pro I, I've heard. Now, don't quote me on this as, as telling you something for sure, but I have heard uh, from various sources that once this gets, in a future update, once this gets too hot, this thing will explode. Just like a regular react, like a nuclear reactor from like industrial craft too, or something like that. So be aware, heat is a bad thing. You want to manage your heat. Uh, this is showing you how much power you're getting: 261 flux per tick, 260 RF a tick. That is the like one engine, one dynamo. The, the uh, dynamos from uh, what do you call it? fucking a? Thermal expansion dynamos are only 80 RF a tick a piece. That's it. Each one will only do 80. Now, if we do some math here really quick, I just want to point this out just for those of you who are curious. Um, each power conduit, let's just think of an energy conduit, you're going to you're gonna need a um, redstone conduit for normal thermal expansion power can hold six sides because every block has six sides, but it has to go to somewhere and it has to have a line. That's assuming that you're making a line of engines. Let's also assume for just the sake of this argument for this math purposes that you're going to put all other sides as engines. So four engines and two sides for continuing the cable on. Okay? So let's just assume that. So that's five right there. This red, this entire block right here is a three by three by three structure. So three times three times three is going to be 27. There's 27 blocks in this structure. Okay? One, one dynamo set up with one cable. We said we we're going to do four, uh, four cables four sides and one cable. So that's going to be four engines and one cable, that's five blocks. So let's go 27 divided by five is going to be 5.4 let's just say five for, for you know safety's sake here. Five times four is 20 engines. Okay? So assuming that you met, that you found the most absolutely perfect, most efficient way to stick engines in here, you could, in the same space with this 9x9x9 nine 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 structure, you could pit, fit 20 dynamos, which are 80 RF a tick a piece anyways, which is 1600 RF a tick. I just want to point that out. So in terms of space, this is extremely space inefficient. I'm going to just tell you guys this right now. I've done this math in the past. You can, you can put more engines per space than one of these blocks. Let's do this a different way. If you guys are confused by the math that I just did, I'll do it a, a more simple way. A 3x3x3 three by three by three structure, we said is 27 blocks of this, um, this reactor is 27 blocks, okay? So at 260, let's just go with 260 because that's an easy number, at 260 RF a tick divided by 27 blocks, this is 9.6296296296. This is basically 9.6 RF a tick per block. Keeping in mind, of course, that each dynamo does 80 RF a tick. So that's how space inefficient this is. Each one of these reactor blocks is one... Uh, I'm going to say one-eighth, just for, just for math simplicity's sake. In terms of space, this is one-eighth as efficient as a dynamo. Okay? Or as, as a set of dynamos, I should say, of the same size. Now, that being said, I would still use this in terms of power output because it's more fuel efficient. The Eulorium doesn't burn that quickly. 
Uh, the magmatic dynamos, they burn about 10 millibuckets of lava every couple of seconds. Um, I think it's the same for the reactor dynamos and the but I'm Tish. Compression dynamos that use fuel. They burn up fuel a lot faster compared to this. Um, I don't have numbers for you, but I did a setup of my own at some point or another and managed to make that a thing that was seeable. Words, words, words. God, I feel with words. It was a thing that was seeable, guys. Trust me. I've been talking while this has been burning fuel because I want to show you guys the conversion rate. You can see this is a 0 0.027 millibuckets per tick fuel conversion rate, millibuckets per tick. So this is this is the fuel burn-up rate, this rate at which fuel is fissioned into waste in the core. So if we come around here and we look, eventually this is going to shrink and it's going to come out here. It's going to eject the blue uh, blue ingots, what are they called again, cyanide ingots? It's going to eject those bitches in here. Now, uh, this is, looks like it's not going to get much hotter and there's several things that affect the uh, the burn-up rate. Fuel reactivity, how heavily irradiated the core is. Higher levels of radiation reduce fuel burn-up. So it's at 100%. The reason it's 100% is because this is a solid structure. We didn't put any like empty spaces in here with, with liquids of any kind for um, coolant. Now, the thing about this is that this is really small. This is the smallest you can possibly get this thing. Uh, and we're only getting 200 and something RF a tick. 251 now. It's starting at 260 something. So I'm going to go ahead and destroy this structure because we're done with this. But basically this burn up rate, I'll just tell you guys. Actually, you know, I'm going to leave this burning. It's not like this is costing me anything to leave this here. So I want to show you guys that this ejects, uh, ejects waste out right here. So uh, we'll leave that guy going for the time being and that's how fast he's been generating. Uh, the entire time I was just I was just rambling right there about numbers and math. We got, we got about 2 million RF. So let's just keep that in mind. That's about one rest on so. The biggest you can make this bitch is seven by seven by seven. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Bam. Now the entire floor is going to be these casing. In any sort of reactor you ever make, the, the center floor is always going to be casing. Okay. Now we're going to get the fuel rods. We're going to go up seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, oh, shit, that was some lag right there. Two, three, four, five, six. One more, seven. And we're going to bring this frame over here like this. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, this makes a lot of power. So, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Now, this is the one that in my actual playthrough with my friend and server admin, Xavier McMage, uh, he and uh, uh, I joined his, his, his girlfriend... I joined them on her server when she made an Agrarian Sky server, and in my actual playthrough, this is the size that I made mine, and it is awesome! So I'm going to just go ahead and do the fuel rods really quick here. We're going to stick this guy. It's going to be in the very center, dead center here, so we can go all the way out to 3x3x3 three by three by three in the center here, okay? And we can just stack these fuckers up like this. Stack these bitches, like so, all the way up until you get to the top. Uh, without actually going into the top layer. Because on top of each one, as I mentioned before, has to be the control rods. So keep that in mind. Always control rods up here. Alright? So that's how that centers so that's going to look. And then we're going to do glass, and we're going to do our controller. So let me grab a controller really quick here. We're done with the fuel rods, and we're done with this guy. Uh, controller, reactor controller. I'm going to put the reactor controller right here. And I'm going to put the power taps. I'm going to put a couple power taps right there like that. Uh, redstone ports. I already showed off the redstone port, but I'll put one down anyway. Uh, computer control ports. This doesn't have a recipe, so I'm not sure I should be showing this. If I click R, that's the wrench. Not going to help us out. This doesn't have a recipe right now. I think it's because it's 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 in the game, but it doesn't have a recipe because I think they're still working on it. In fact, I don't even know if it has a UI. Block is not valid for use in machine's interior. Okay. So I don't know how that actually works. I think this is, from what I understand, this is going to be computer control. Like for computer craft, for those of you that are good at uh, doing computer craft and that kind of thing. I'm not, so whatever. Uh, Rednet ports, we'll stick that right there. And let's get a couple of, the, uh, couple of these guys. Whoop, that's another power tap. Cool. So the rest of this is going to be glass. Like so. I think the wand will let me... Yeah! Nice! Very cool. So I'm going to put some glass along the, along the insides here really quick. Yep, did up. Oh, 
Yep, there we go. Yay for Builder's Wand. I love Builder's Wand! Oh, so happy! Okay, so we'll get these sides closed off with glass as well. This is probably going to be jammed in the corner of your base, and you'll never see these backsides anyway, unless you really need access to them. Uh, you can put as many of the peripherals as you want, peripherals being these guys, the power taps, and the fuel injector ports, and the controller. Any peripheral you want, so you can put as many as you want. They just have to go um, on the edges. They have to go in the sides, not the edges. So just keep that in mind. You can put however many you want. You can put, have 15 fuel injectors, you have all kinds of power taps, however many you want. Let me get another couple of empty cells here really quick. I'm going to stick these guys in the sides, like so. Cool story, bro. And let me make sure that you're not outputting, because I don't want you outputting, because he'll be just dumping into there. There we go. That's all input now. Um, so here's the thing. This is as big as this guy can get, and you can stick coolant in here. You have to stick coolant in here, because this is only going to work... It's a multi-block structure, so the entire thing has to be filled up anyway. So you could put just straight casings in here if you wanted to, uh, but that's going to be really inefficient. This guy will exp explode really fast. You, you will shove in things, and he will blow. I'm telling you right now. Um, but it's really going to be better for you some sort of coolant. And now, the ones that I've heard is you can do water. Uh, you can do... I think it's cryothium is what it's called. Yeah, you can do cryothium. The gel cryothium. Or you can do enderium. Liquid enderium. Now, the way you make these guys... These are thermal expansion liquids, except for the water, obviously. Derp. Uh, let me get this here. I'm going to get another bucket. Because I'm in creative mode, and the only way to pick up liquid is with buckets. So I'm going to get an empty bucket. Let me just demonstrate that, actually. If you want to see it, I'll just show you. Uh, yep. Like that. Cool story, bro. So, you have to destroy it with an empty bucket, but you don't fill up the bucket. So you can do this. You get down here, you get down one level, and you put water like so. All the way around the edges. And that is going to be the coolant for the reactor. And you'll tell, you can tell when the, when the surface goes all the way smooth is when you've got it done there. And let's get some more casing here because you have to cover this up with casing. Okay? So we're going to come in here and we're going to cover this all the way up. Bam! Reactor complete. Uh, cooled with water. We come in here, we can see that everything's good. Everything's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and fill this guy up with fuel really quick here. Uh, it's going to take a lot. Let's say one stack, two stacks, uh, two stacks, and 50-something right there. Uh, Twelve. I don't know how I'm going to finish off. One, one, two, three, four. Fifty-two. Two stacks and fifty-two to fill up this size reactor. In case you were curious. You might not have been. I don't know. So you can see the entire thing in there is filled up, and this thing is now going to be turned on. So let's go ahead and just turn this on. Bow! Bam! You see how fast that core heat went up? Jesus, fuck! It went into the red really fast, and we are all the way up in 3,000 Celsius, 3,100 Celsius. That is a lot of heat, and that probably would have exploded if it could. Uh, you can see this guy's up to 788C. He's still plugging away. He's got about 3 million RF, almost 4 million RF in this guy right here. Uh, you can see that he is still burning up. He hasn't actually made any waste yet. Hey, thank you. So he's still working on making waste. This is hot as shit. 3,188. 3, but look at this. We're getting 4.08 kilo RF. 4,000 RF a tick. Look at how fast that shit's filling up. We already have 1.5 million. We're, almost, we're about to cross the 2 million mark right now. And mark. 2 million RF in both cells, I might add, because we have two power taps and two cells. We already have 4 million RF a tick and counting. This guy just crossed the 4 million in the time it took me to build this. That's going to be your power output difference. Now, the thing is, is that this guy, these cells, these resonant energy cells, this is the max size energy cell you can get in thermal expansion, can only accept 10,000 RF a tick. This is generating 4, uh, 4,072 RF a tick. Look at that. So we're still, we're still not getting as much as you can hold in one cell, but I haven't made this as optimal as possible yet either. This is 200% reactivity. Uh, this, the fuel the fuel is burning up like crazy. Look, here's the thing. Remember this is millibuckets per tick, how fast this is burning up? This is 0.469 millibuckets a tick right now. Remember this guy's only 0.25, so this is burning up fuel way faster. Of course, it has more fuel to burn up, so that might be a thing, so who knows. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. We'll click the off button right there. 
Do not auto eject waste. Auto eject waste. Waste must be manually ejected. Ejection can be done from this screen or via red net rest under. Okay, cool. Whatever. So we're going to turn that off. Whoop. Don't do that. Uh, so we stop this guy. He's going to he's gonna basically peter out. And, uh, <laughs> peter out. Uh, this is going to cool down. A 9.9 or 99.4 percent full because it's got a ton of fuel in there. I'm gonna go ahead and break this open now, and we are going to change this from water because that is not efficient at all. Holy shit, not efficient. Uh, the other option that we're going to have open to us is going to be, aside from water, is the cryothium and the resin ender. Now, cryothium is a magma crucible cryothium dust, which is made out of going snowball, a blizz powder, a nitre, and a redstone. Nitre, you get... It's saltpeter, basically. It comes out of saltpeter ore. Pulverize that shit, that's how you're going to get that. Um, the nitre also is going to be... Oh, the blizz powder comes from a blizz rod. You craft it, or you macerate it into four of them, and you get a 50% chance to get a snowball. These are blizz rods. These are dropped by the blizzes, which is the cold version of a blaze. You find them in snow biome sometimes. So you can do that for your... Oh, wow, that has... Oh, it drops. Oh, that's right. This is one of those liquids, those thermal expansion liquids, that is even more dense than air. So it actually... So you actually are going to have to fill this whole thing up, by the way. If you want to use this guy, you're going to have to fill this entire fucking thing up, which is one block at a time. See that? And then you're going to have to go and do that block, because he'll fall. Oh, yeah. Whoop. Shit. This is going to take a few minutes, guys. Let me, let me uh, pause the video really quick while I fill this shit up. Alright guys, this episode is going really long, and I know everybody hates my long fucking ass episodes, because they're dicks. Nah, no, I love you guys, my whopping two dedicated fans. Oh, win! Um, this episode's ran quite a bit long, and it turns out it's going to be almost an hour and a half, I think. So, what I'm going to do is break this into two parts, so I'll have part one and part two. The big reactors, hope you guys have enjoyed, it every enjoyed everything so far, especially my little rage, because I can't fucking talk. Like, favorite, follow, subscribe, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, slash RobDOPGamer. Peace.